Boys and girls, Alex here. Thanks to the generosity of Steve Good, although admittedly he didn't necessarily volunteer for this, um, I have made from his um, supplied drawings, which he calls, affectionately calls the hex puzzle, I have made several of his puzzles. I have taken the liberty of adding pictures to the puzzles basically for two reasons one is that if both sides of the puzzle were blank like this you would know which side was up thereby making the puzzle just so much more difficult it actually makes extrapolates a difficulty if you don't know which side is up in my past puzzles I used to color one side um, with a texture so you'll know that that's the bottom side however this time I've decided to actually laser engrave uh, pictures of a cat only because this was inspired by a friend of mine who asked me to cut out some silhouettes of a cat which you could mount on a wall to make up a clock another story um, in fact I might have actually covered that in another video anyway this is a thing I shall now zip off and uh, try and add to this video of how I went ahead making it and then uh, hopefully by the end of it I'll come back and uh, show you how it works, how it all fits together. Images have been laser burnt. The backing plate has been Ferrari has been cut and these are the cheat sheets that I'm just about to laser cut they're actually made out of laminated paper you know just that normal flimsy lamination and I'll show you how easy it is cut on the laser okay the paper has been set the lid is going to be closed I'm just about to start up the print and hopefully I can give you a picture of how quickly it goes there you are, here we go zip 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 I actually did a previous cut but I forgot to focus the laser because it was focused on uh, 6mm MDF and of course it didn't come out too well so let's try this one now as you can see it should just separate as you can see look at that separates beautifully um, Oh, come on, in one piece, and that's flip side, well hang on, let's focus this thing, there we are, the flip side, and the active side, alright, that's it guys, down at the workshop, this is really the start of the puzzle, other than the design and all that, um, this is after it's come off, off the laser it's engraved to about, with two passes, it's down about a mil and a half the main reason for that is it just gives the opportunity of filling it up with uh, wood filler and then sanding it back and not sanding right through to the base um, this is the backing board for all it's worth um, these holes are going to be popped out they're really just push holes so you can when when the puzzle is put onto the backing board you can actually push them out if you've got a piece in the wrong spot because it's a tight fit you can actually push them up out through the hole what I'm going to do get rid of this for a start is wood fill um, these I use a ebony wood filler with a small spatula look there's nothing magical to it you fill it in let it dry sand it down and then fill in all the hollows after that as you can see it's fairly quick because there's not that much to it initially not the first pass anyway um, and again I'm not going to waste too much time while I'm doing this I might come back to this after I've filled all this in but you know I mean who wants to see me put 
this crap on. So let me switch the camera off. The body filler has been put on, or the wood filler, the knife scraped clean or whatever, which is good. I shall put this out of the way for the time being. All that's got to do is now wait for it to dry and we'll continue them from there. But just to give you a bit of a history on this black stuff, normally with my puzzles, what I tend to do is get a texture and I colour the back of it a different colour just so you'll know which is the right way up and uh, the back down because it's bad enough trying to get the puzzle to fit if you happen to have it upside down you know it, it just uh, multiplies the difficulty exponentially because uh, why do you think it could go two ways but um, the different number of combinations of this with one piece upside down and you, if you can imagine the way mathematics works, two pieces upside down multiplies four times, three pieces upside down eight times are difficult, and stuff like that. So what I used to do is do that. Then I thought to myself, well, okay, rather than colour these pieces in reverse, because there you are, this is the, this is the actual cheat sheet I have for it. They're the pieces around. Now, I might uh, colour one piece, or the, back, the other side a different colour. And I said, oh, that's rubbish. What I'll actually do is, rather than just put a colour, let's put a picture on it. Now, this particular one happens to have cats on it, only because a friend of mine, his son, they own a cattery. He might be interested, you know, this could be just a nice little thing to put on a table while they're serving customers, let the kids play with it. I don't know. Um, it's just a thought, cat theme. And that way you can at least use the picture to differentiate from one side or the other. So you can put the puzzle together with all the cats facing down, which means you just get a blank canvas, or all the cats facing up and all that. Um, this might be a little bit, well harder because a lot of the pieces are exactly the same size so they're interchangeable however here you've got to remember what cat is in what order and oh let's not worry about that okay um this backing board as i might have mentioned before you just pop these out um makes a hell of a mess um and that's it i won't go into too much detail yet as I said, what I'll have to do is come back, uh, wait till that dries, sand it down, refill the hollows, give it another sand, then sand it up. Then I've got to go up there, up to the laser room, and cut out the pieces as they are, and they become individual. Then they've got to be sanded again, which is going to be a pain, uh, because they're no longer one piece, and... The sander tends to lift them up. But anyway, that's my problem, not yours. You just have to watch me have my problems. And then, naturally, he's going to go over to the buffer to clean up. Look, I'm just ad-libbing. I'm just using up a bit more time waiting for that bloody thing to dry. Um, I do use a buffer for the simple reason that the laser has got a kerf of about oh, 0.1 to 0.2 mil thickness and the pieces fit very snugly as you can see that fits in there you've got to actually well you can see it doesn't really fall through well there you are that one did but it's it's a tight a tight fit now you'll find that with those pieces if I put some lacquer on it they'd never fit together again the laser itself burns the kerf and because this is MDF it's got a amount of glue in it I suppose I don't know I haven't looked into the science of it but it's got some glue in it I presume it melts and hardens the glue and it actually forms a quite a decent solid edge on it so that doesn't need to be protected and the only way I can protect this really uh, short of putting lacquer on it which as I said won't work is to polish it up with um, on my buffing wheel 
You'll notice here my typical alignment hold. That's so I can then align this backing board to the frame that holds the puzzle um, while I'm, you know, while the glue's drying. Anyway, camera off, off to the drawing board or back upstairs until the filler dries. Bye for now. Okay, back here again. I'm sure you all want to watch how to sand. So here we go. I should check the grit. I think that's 240. Nowhere near strong enough. I want to use 150. That'll remove it quick. better I haven't fully cleaned it up because naturally I'm going to be putting more over it and the hardest part is going to be is just getting those uh, leach marks off where the timber mate has actually soaked into the MDF so I'm probably got to go down about 0 0.2 0 0.3 of a mil that's why I do laser in grey fairly deeply anyway it's just getting to be more a case of uh, just a bit more of this goo. I normally don't have to put much on. As you can see, just a quick pass over it. Um, and again, I'm not going to bore you shitless by doing the whole board um, because there's no benefit in watching me do that. So anyway, I shall come back when that has dried again. Here I am at the buffing wheel. Unfortunately, I forgot to take a picture when I had it on the Tripoli powder. I'll show you basically what I'm doing on the white diamond. However, it's no different to anything else and it's quite boring. The only difference might be is I might spend about 15 seconds more on the Tripoli than on the white diamond. Because then when I go to the actual wax, I'll probably spend about uh, 15 seconds less on that. But all you do, turn that on, load it up with the wax, which is a white diamond. And you'll see how fast I actually do go. Um, give it a good buff. The only thing you've got to be careful of is that these pieces don't get sucked out. And that's just about it for the white diamond. You'll find that uh, the Tripoli, as I said, might have been a bit quicker and that's it. So nothing magical about that. Look. I'll go over to the other one. Here we are. Zoom in a little bit so you don't get my ugly whoops face. Here we go. All right, camera, shift the camera still on. Here we go. Turn this on. I use this one only because I, I'm just too lazy to change the wheel. And for the wax, this uh, small wheel seems to be good enough. Give it a good coat of wax. This is Canuba wax. And you'll notice too, it's rather quick. I'm running this at, at the moment at 2000 revs. The other two ran at about 1400. It's a smaller wheel, so it doesn't quite run as fast as a larger wheel. Naturally, the bigger the wheel, the further distance the outer perimeter has to travel so therefore the outer part of the wheel will always travel faster than the smaller wheel. There, how's that for a little bit of time? Now that I've done that, I've only done triply on both. What I've got to do now is go back on, on the other flip side, I've already done the triply 
And once I did the triple, I thought, no bugger it, I should finish the back sides first before I do the main side. And so I'm going to go back to the white diamond. Um, to do that, hang on. God, I, I like the way I'm always prepared. Let's turn this off. Now hopefully I don't have a major accident. Flip that over. I don't know whether you can see that or not. That goes over there. Pull that out. And now we're ready to go for the white diamond. That's the pattern for that. And you can see it's already a bit shiny because it's already had the... Um, what do you call it? The triple E put on it. Okay, camera off. For all it's worth, this is a setup I've got for sanding the pieces, the puzzle pieces, only because if I sand them in place, the suction tends to pull them out of the frame and I can damage the edges or and uh, bugger them up. So what I actually do is turn this on and I won't hold it there because it's the sandpaper rips shit out of my fingers. In fact, I've been using gloves. If you have a look at the mess that's made of the gloves, well, we're doing that to my fingers. So, stuff that, you know, I'd rather lose the gloves. But anyway, I usually hold it on there, flip it over to get rid of the burn marks on the back, and that's done. Um, so, yeah, it's simple as that, um, but it's only to protect the pieces. It's a laborious task because it's about 17 pieces you've got to go through and trust me it takes longer than you think. This new puzzle I'm currently working on here is destined to go into this black border. Actually hang on I might even I don't know whether I can move this across. No. Okay. Um, yeah, it's destined to go into this. Uh, damn it! I'll have to do that up again into this black border. Oh, look, I just thought I'd show you before because I just might forget to take a picture or uh, video of it. Um, at the moment, all I'm doing is painting the border and the back and the frame black. I'm giving it two coats of uh, black stain. I'm going to leave it overnight to dry. And then using just one of these blank pieces that I'll actually put in there, I'll polish this up. I won't I polish this up on with this rather than use the actual puzzles, only because the black tends to leach into that uh, with the use of the buffer, it'll just drag the black onto it and I don't want it marked. And in fact I've actually got a separate set of uh, buffers to handle the black uh, unit. Again, as I said, if I don't forget, I might take a video of it. I'd rather not because it'll just make this bloody so much longer and while I've always tried to make it a short video, it always seems to drag out. Okay, enough chatter. That's it. Aha, uh -huh. here we are back again. Actually, it's only about two minutes later. However, because all the other videos were made before this, but you won't know that because this will be on the end of the other ones. But anyway, beside the point, let's put these two aside and flip this one out. Now what I've actually done is on the laser I've actually cut out, or not cut out, I've laminated this printout, actually I was quite surprised, and I think I might have covered that, yeah I have, I've covered it in the video, um, this thing here, that's the flip side, however, if you then flip it over, oh, let's go this way, uh, one at a time, flip them all over, um, that's a puzzle, as you can see, um, some of the pieces are the same, not too many, but enough, actually this is a very common piece, this one, there's enough pieces of that, there's about two or three of these pieces upside down or whatever, now that's repeated again there, um, but 
those other pieces there are enough to make it actually quite a complex little puzzle. It looks simple. You finish up, you can just about put the pieces everywhere until you come to put the final piece in and then suddenly you find, um, oops, that doesn't fit. And as I say, if you've got it upside down, that makes it even worse. That's why there is this little cheat sheet. And I will use a cheat sheet to put it together again. And hopefully, I'm not going to talk, because hopefully there might be a way to fast forward the video so you won't be bored shitless watching me put it together. There, yeah, pretty simple. Um, now, that was okay because I followed that. On the flip side, you haven't got the pictures to go by, but you've got the shapes, so you can do it just as easily. Let's put that aside. Oh, by the way, for all it's worth, you'll notice at the back here, there's holes there. The reason for that is that when you put it together, because it is a fairly tight fit, if you put the wrong piece in, at least you can poke it out from underneath without having to try and pry it like say if you wanted to get that one out you'd have to try and get a fingernail in there this way you can poke it out that was my one of my clever little designs there you are Steve learn from that <laughs> sorry mate um, that's it now we'll go away from Steve because Steve is a uh, fairly devout Christian he often uh, has uh, religious type of uh, connotation so he probably won't approve of this next edition I've got um, so Steve don't watch what I have done is naturally I've made this and it's my pussy thing well naturally being a pussy thing I had to turn it into an adult only version now here's my version of that one it's not that it's bad at all or anything like that it's just girly silhouettes oops yeah, you know, we've got we've got a couple upside down here already. Um, is that it's not even in the right spot. That's because I put it together um, on the blank side, and it doesn't matter which way it goes. So the way it goes again, you know, let's pretend this one goes together a bit quicker because I've done this a few times, so I know exactly. Well, not exactly, but where the pieces go. Um, do why is that that I know? Although they happen to be in place, it's not so much that. I have actually played with this one a few times. Um, whoops, I know that one doesn't go there. That one definitely goes there. That one goes in there. That's it in there, and that's there. As you can see, that was done <laughs> rather quickly and not because those pieces were in place. Um, now, the fact that that isn't in there, it actually makes this flat. Putting that in there, it lifts it out. So that was my, actually this would be my latest creation. Um, prior to that, one of the things I did do is make this one. Now, it is again the same, sort of, let's see whether we can do that, there you are. But it doesn't actually come with instructions as the other one does. What, it, what I've actually done is I've added this, God I hope this is all going to be in the thing, this bottom layer which has an engraving of it on there. The rest is, again, similar, except that with this, this comes off. Now, the reason why this actually comes off, for the same reason as I've got the holes there. Uh, when you had the pieces in place, you could actually lift this off without actually disturbing the rest of it. But since then, I've gone back and, uh, fortunately, with the way it was, um, I actually could go back and uh, put this on the laser bed cut out the extra holes, but I, as I've already made this backing plate, um, it's good. Um, and the beauty of it is you can just hide it underneath and uh, whatever. But with this too, if you want to now do it on the blank side, you've got to start thinking in reverse and putting these in on the opposite side, you've got to twist your mind around. Um, and, well, all right, let's see. Uh, no reason why I can't do that. Well, I can. There is a reason, but 
We won't go into that. Come on. As I said, you know, it, it seems like a very, very simple little puzzle. And it it is. Up until you get, unless you put it in the right order, you get to the last piece or two, and then you've got gaps everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but uh, you've got gaps. And again, that parks beautifully under that. Now, the difference between these is you'll find that under there it's flocked to give it a bit of a softer cushioning. These ones have got rubber feet and now that that's loose I've effectively got to pull this apart put this under and put it back together again to hide it otherwise you lose it but anyway guys that's it um, as I might have mentioned uh, with the compliments or unknown compliments of a chap called Steve Good if you're into scroll sawing he's got some brilliant absolutely brilliant patterns going in it's all free um, he sells a few stuff, but the patterns are by themselves free, which is quite good. And uh, if you're into scroll sawing or want to look at scroll sawing, he's a wealth of knowledge to get started. Now, um, I'm just recording this video, so I haven't done it. My next step is to go upstairs and try and make sense of all these little bits and pieces that I've done. So, uh, hopefully... It'll be uru and goodbye and you'll see the finished video come out and I hope it's not going to be three or four hours long like it could be. Anyway, boys and girls, goodbye.